Why not? The Dow's up 370, Nasdaq's up 273, and Michael Lee is with us. Now, you've brought a couple of stocks along that you like and uh, that you think are going to go up. So I'm going to start with Google. Where is it now and where is it going? It's at 134. Yeah, so um, Google, out of this Magnificent 7, Magnificent 8, uh, is the cheapest of the lots. Okay, that's, that's why I like it. And when you're in a situation with a slowing economy, tightening credit conditions, um, and things kind of clouds around the macro environment, you want to be invested in companies that have the best balance sheets, the most yeah. recession-proof business models. And I think it's a big reason why we've seen this outperformance from this Magnificent 7, Magnificent 8. Um, Google's your cheapest out of all of them. Cheapest, okay, got that. Well, that's attractive. Uh, it's up 1.7% pre-market today. Tell me about Facebook, otherwise known as Meta. Yeah, so, so this is a um, this is a cost-cutting kind of pivot story here, and it's amazing how these big tech companies can just pivot their business models on a dime. And so uh, Facebook, which it should be changed its name back because they've abandoned the metaverse, um, it, this has been the story with them, is that, again, another extraordinarily clean balance sheet, very easy access to capital as credit conditions are continuing to tighten. Uh, dramatic cost cutting and and on a free cash flow yield just like google the two cheapest out of the biggest names i think the biggest names continue to win okay nvidia oh <laughs> yeah that's yes a, you've been you've been talking about this for a long time it's nearly nearly 500 bucks a share as of right now so Stuart, um what happened is you had what what technical analysis call a head and shoulders pattern and which means the stock was really going to fall out of bed because it topped 500 after the last earnings we saw it back down around 400 and from there the fact that it didn't trade down to 300 it didn't fall apart we've seen this hundred dollar ramp in the stock means people are pretty positive people think this is going on and there were some real headlines a few weeks ago about uh, the US banning certain AI chips into China yeah. it looks like the market has digested that and the way that I understand it is that um, they can't sell them as fast as um, you know th there's far more demand than they have supply so this block on China is just gonna free up other supply for other people um, they are they are selling pickaxes right near a massive gold mine I love them okay you love them uh, who doesn't when it's at normal 500 bucks a share it's up about 25 percent in a couple of weeks isn't it really uh, Bitcoin you like them oh uh, yeah we are in a sentinel moment for Bitcoin so earlier this year when Silicon Valley Bank failed and the government decided to bail out every single deposit under the sun Bitcoin rallied from approximately 17,000 to 28,000 and why is that important because it's the first risk-off moment where Bitcoin rallied versus selling off with everything else and since then uh, we've had massive government deficits so tax revenue came in at four and a half trillion versus five trillion which the CBO and the government expected and so as a result deficits are going to be much higher I think that we're gonna have a, an excess of a two trillion dollar deficit next year okay? okay in addition to that you have the ETF approval and then the halving process so the rewards for the Bitcoin miners is going to get cut in half next summer. That having, having process has coincided with every other major ramp in Bitcoin going on. So it's, it's a trifecta of events happening all at once. Where's it going? 60,000 again? Uh, I, I think north of 200. Yuri, north of 200,000? Yuri and Timmer says, from Fidelity says 800,000. So he's much smarter than me. You saved the best till last. Yes. Thanks so much indeed, Mike. We'll see you again soon. Thank okay, you. they've stopped ringing the bell. He's pressed.